Hi, welcome to our first optimization practice problem video. So my goal with doing these practice problem videos is to just give you exposure to some actual optimization questions. Now these are often, so optimization in particular is a topic that just requires a ton of practice to do, right? That's true of most of math, to be honest, but optimization in particular has very little like theory associated with it. It's mostly just seeing different situations and just practicing, practicing as much of them and is practicing them as much as you can and getting familiar with like all the associated uh, heuristics right so one piece of advice i will give you for this video is though is please don't try and memorize the problems right memorize the heuristics memorize this process we're going through and apply that to different problems and each problem of course will have and get out the subtleties from each problem don't memorize the question that is not the way to do this okay so with that let's go ahead and start this problem okay so We'd like to build a mountainside pen for our sheep. Yay. So we're building a rectangular pen, right? Three sides of this pen will be made from steel wiring, and one side will just be the mountain. So it's often helpful, like this is not really a formal step, but it's helpful just to draw out a little picture just for ourselves to see what's really happening, right? So we have a mountain here, right? Um, and we're building a rectangular pen and three sides of the rectangle, remember, are steel wiring that, that we're providing. So this side, this side of the pen is covered by the mountain, other three sides are wiring that we are providing. Okay. So we also are told that we have a hundred feet of wire. Okay. So what dimensions should we make the pen to maximize this enclosed area here? Okay. So this is the kind of thing we'll see in optimization. So the first step we always want to do, right? The first step is we want to define our goal, explicitly define our goal. And again, the goal of the, the whole purpose of this is to keep us grounded in reality because a lot of times with optimization, what happens is later down, we might lose track of what we're actually looking for. And so we might not actually answer the question directly. So it's really important to stay grounded. So it's important to state our goal explicitly so that we stay grounded in what the problem is looking for. So our goal is going to be the maximize area Cool. So our goal is to maximize. Uh, let's just underline that. So our goal is to maximize area. So the second, the second step that we're gonna f we, we need is we want to write an equation, right? We want to write an equation that would actually tell us this area, right? So let's go up here and put some variables down, right? Let's put some variables down just so that we we know what we're looking at, right? So. One, so this is a rectang rectangle, right? So both of these sides are going to be the same length. Let's call that, uh, maybe let's call it W. And both these sides are going to be the same length. Let's call that L, right? So we have W and L. So we can just write an equation for area, which is going to be A equals LW. Okay, so that's our equation for area. However, that equation is an equation of two variables. So we can't really do any calculus on that right now. So what we need to do, therefore, as our third step, right, as our third step, we need to go ahead and we need to make an equation of one variable, right, we need to make an equation using one variable, and we do this using what we call a constraint, right, we use this, we make this using a constraint, and this, if you recall, is kind of one of those, um, it's a sort of a restriction that the problem puts on us that helps us sort of guide towards um, towards a solution, right? So that's what we're gonna do. So let's look back and see if we can find a constraint here. Now, if you look up here, you'll remember we need a hundred feet. We have we have only a hundred feet of wire, right? We only have a hundred feet of wire. So you'll agree that all the wiring we use in this problem has to come out to a total of 100, right? We cannot exceed 100 feet of wire. So you will agree, so we can come down here and say, okay, so I'm using wire for here, for this side, right? I need wire for this side, I need wire for this side, and I need wire for this side, right? And this side, of course, is length W. I don't need wiring for this side because that's just a mountain. So I know that I have to have two W plus L that must come out to 100 at most right that has this can 
has to equal 100. Right? So I can now solve this. I can now solve this equation for one of my two variables. I can solve for one of my two variables in terms of the other, right? So in this case, I'm gonna solve this equation for L because I don't have to divide by two that way. So I can say, all right, so L is gonna be 100 minus two W. And that right there is my constraint, or that's, that right there is my more, is my constraint. So now I can put this back into this equation, right? And we can begin and we can, use that to create an equation of just one variable, right? So now what we're gonna have is not just A, but now we have A of W because we have, it's just gonna be an equation of W and this is gonna be, so when we plug in for L, we're gonna have 100 minus two W times W, right? So we have an equation of just the one variable that is W. Now our next step, and this is where we actually start doing calculus, is to be is going to be to find extreme values. Right? What kind of extreme value are we looking for though? Well, we're looking for a max, right? How do we know? Well, if we look back to our goal, we're trying to maximize area, right? So therefore we know that we're looking for a maximum. And that's also why it's helpful to have the goal there. It keeps us, it makes sure that we're looking for the right thing, right? So to do this though, we're gonna need to take a derivative, do some critical points. So to make that a little bit easier on us, I'm gonna go ahead and foil this out, right? So if we do that, what we end up getting is 100w minus 2w squared. Okay, fantastic. So the first step to finding extreme values, of course, is to find our critical points. Yeah. And to do that, we're gonna find our first derivative and set it equal to zero. So we have F, not F prime actually, we're gonna have A prime of W, which is gonna be 100 minus four W. And we're setting that equal to zero. We're gonna add this over to that side and divide by four. We're gonna get W equals 25, right? Which is kinda nice. So once that's done, what we can do is we can go ahead and uh, we can go ahead and test if that what kind of extreme value that is, right? And to do that, I'm gonna use a second derivative test and you'll see why in just a second. You can also use a first derivative test, don't get me wrong, but you will see why a second is so much nicer here. Okay, so let's take our second derivative. So a double prime of w is going to be, the 100 goes away, so we're just gonna be left with minus four. So that minus four is now independent of w. So it's always going to be negative regardless of what W is. So I don't actually even need to plug in W. So I've saved myself one step of work. So I can go ahead and say right away that that's less than zero. So we have a max at X equals 25. So without even having to plug, uh, sorry, not X, my, my apologies, that should be W equals 25. So I didn't even need to plug in my critical point to realize, is to realize that that's a max. And that's why the second derivative test is so much nicer, right? So that's that. And now also here's a good point where we want to consider, where we want to think about, maybe let's do that in, in pink. We also want to think about our domain, right? And this is just to do a quick check to make sure that our answer is, it physically makes sense, right? So uh, let's go back up here and let's think about the smallest value of W that we can have. Well, the smallest value of w we can have is zero, right? If we have a, if we have w equals zero, then that would be, that would, that would just be using all the, we would just be forming a straight line. So smallest possible w equals zero, right? So that's that. Now what's the largest possible value of w we could have, right? So we could go back up here to find the largest possible value of w. So, so the largest W is gonna be when L is equal to zero, right? 
because we're using all of this wiring just on the width and none of it for the length. So what's going to happen here is we so we can we can say 2w equals 100 and so w equals 50. So we'd use 50 on this side, 50 on this side and just not have a length. We and just not have this side. Right. So so the largest w equals 50. None of these really make sense. Neither of these really make a lot of physical sense though, right? Because if we used w equals 50, we're just making a straight line that looks like this because we have no no length here. If we do if we set w equal to 0, we're forming a line like this, right? So neither of these are very helpful to us, so our domain is going to be the open interval 0 to 50. Right? Uh, that's going to be for w right so so we, now let's check very quickly if our if our answer is within the domain right and it is so 25 is on 0 to 50 so therefore we can now go ahead and state our conclusion right which is that we can maximize volume. So volume is maximized when W equals 25 feet. Don't forget the units. However, we're not just asked for W, we're asked for the dimensions in general, right? So. We also want to figure out what value of L we should use. So we could come back over here. So we could pull this constraint, come down here, right? So, so if we're saying 2w plus L has to equal 100, and we know w is 25, so we're going to have 2 times 25 plus L equals 100. Uh, so 50 plus L equals 100. So L is just going to equal 50. So the volume is maximized when W equals 25 feet and L equals 50 feet. And that right there is your final answer. If you found this video helpful, please do like, share, subscribe, leave a comment and check out some other videos. See you next time.